Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclone Resource and here is your detailed forecast update for Wednesday the 20th of November 2024. Today we're going to crack into some severe thunderstorms expected across Queensland southeast later on in the forecast period. We're also going to talk about some very heavy rainfall across the central Queensland and the far north Queensland coastline. We'll talk about some heavy rainfall expected over interior parts of uh, the Northern Territory and then into WA. We'll also touch on the heat wave that's expected to materialise from tomorrow across parts of Victoria and New South Wales, which will exacerbate the fire danger ratings down there. All of that plus more coming up in today's weather forecast. And if you are brand new to the channel, please consider subscribing. The support lately has been much appreciated. But let's get stuck straight into things over on the central coast. A bit of a change from the southeastern Queensland weather forecast that we've had over the last couple of weeks. We're going to get stuck straight into things around the Mackay area, where we do have some very heavy rainfall that's going to materialise across this part of Queensland over the coming 72 hours. So let's take a look at that hour by hour right now. Throughout the course of today, you can see on the synoptic and the rainfall map, you can see a low pressure area or a low pressure trough actually is expected to develop across parts of the central Queensland coastline, extending up from Agnes Water through uh, Mackay and then up towards Bowen. Now watch very closely here, you might be able to see on the wind lines that we do get a weak low pressure system develop somewhere around here and this is going to be the core of the system and on the southern side of this low pressure system where this uh, low pressure tracks, we're going to have a bit of a rain bomb if you'd like or a big ball of rain and moisture heading into the Queensland coastline and that's going to bring some very significant rainfall accumulation totals. So let's break those down for you right now. From tonight, you can see this rainfall does start to pipe up uh, along the central Queensland coastline, especially for locations between Rockhampton up towards about Serena and um, Mackay. Um, or probably a little bit further north in Mackay, actually, the rainfall will pipe up up to about Hamilton Island. And then inland out towards uh, Dingo and then Moranba and Glendon, we'll also see some rainfall out there. It's not going to be too heavy uh, tonight, especially. It will get heavier as the night goes on, and by tomorrow morning, we're really going to be waking up to deluges between Mackay and Rockhampton. But for now, at least over the next 12 hours, the rainfall isn't going to be too heavy, which will give you today to prepare if you do live in a flood-prone area. And there's a good reason to. You've got a lot of rainfall coming in, and I'll explain that all in a couple more minutes. Uh, now, the rainfall itself is going to pipe up very heavy uh, from the south and then track very slowly up towards the north. So the heavy falls are going to start off around the Gladstone, Yepoon and uh, Rockhampton area. Unfortunately for Gladstone, it looks like they're just a little bit too far south to receive the chance of heavy rainfall. They still will get a couple of showers, especially tonight and into early tomorrow morning. But in terms of heavy rainfall, they're not expecting really anything of that nature. And even Rockhampton and Yepoon, which, were too low, which we were talking about for some very heavy rainfall, it doesn't look like it's now on the cards for those locations, but for locations north of Ogmore, we're really going to be talking about the chance of heavy rainfall. And this is this part of Queensland is no stranger to weather like this. For locations between Ogmore and Proserpine, you've got this little bay here, and the winds funnel rainfall in here. And unfortunately for some of the mountainous communities, they live in these valleys uh, with towering mountains surrounding them on pretty much all sides. And once the rainfall gets jammed up against some of those mountains, well, it just it 10xes itself in terms of severity. And this is a classic example of it for, for locations between St. Lawrence and Mackay from early tomorrow morning into late tomorrow morning and early tomorrow afternoon. You're going to have this just funnel of heavy to intense rainfall being uh, shoved ashore. And that's going to extend down to about uh, Ogmore and Yapoon. Rockhampton doesn't look like it's going to get it. And then it'll extend further up the coast. Mackay receiving storms right throughout the course of tomorrow. At Yelba as well, storms throughout the course of tomorrow. Proserpine, Collinsville, Bowen, Ravenswood, Charters Towers and Townsville as well with a chance of storms tomorrow morning and afternoon but like I said that heavy rainfall concentrated around the West Hill Clareview and St Lawrence area uh, extending about as far north as Serena for the intense falls but Mackay and Gargette still receiving those very heavy falls and as you know at sort of Mackay lots of lakes lots of dams lots of rivers they are going to have trouble coping with this amount of rainfall the showers do ease off a little bit Thursday afternoon and evening in fact they do clear out by Friday morning around the Mackay area you'll still have those gusty showers here and there early Friday morning for Mackay and those winds will remain strong and the showers and storms continuing between air and uh, cans which we'll get to in just a couple more minutes uh, right throughout Friday and even in towards Saturday as well. Far North Queensland's a whole different subject so we'll get to that in just a few moments but yeah for the most part the rainfall does ease off by Thursday evening and Friday morning and just over that kind of 36 hour period where well, we do have some really uh, quite incredible rainfall totals especially for this time of the year being so early on into the wet season so just over this not even 48 hour period we have peak rainfall accumulations up 
to about 250 millimetres just offshore. It's a slight decrease from yesterday's forecast, yes, which was, albeit very bullish, but uh, still between 100 and 200 millimetres for a very concentrated area between Clareview up through Flaggy Rock, West Hill, and then up to about Serena, and even Mackay expecting about 100 millimetres just over that uh, kind of concentrated time, and then extending further inland out to the mountains uh, adjacent to Clareview and St. Lawrence, some of them extending up to about nine, uh, 900 metres or 1,000 metres in altitude. So there's going to be a lot of rainfall that's going to get itself jammed up into some of the mountainous valleys up there. So flash flooding, riverine flooding looks to be set in stone. Uh, in terms of the highest risk for flooding times, uh, flash flooding is most likely around lunchtime on Thursday into the early afternoon hours, and then riverine flooding will pipe up from about lunchtime Thursday, continuing through Friday, and then hopefully easing off by early Saturday morning. But I would not be surprised if rivers got up to the uh, moderate or even the major flooding alerts on Thursday evening. I mean, there's going to be a lot of water pumping through these areas here. And as we know with Queensland's tropical rainfall, the accumulations can blow out dramatically. And if you're talking about 25 to 30 millimetres an hour sitting over these locations for eight hours, that's 240 millimetres plus showers that come on uh, later than that. You'll be talking about rainfall accumulations blowing out to three or 350 millimetres, which is entirely plausible at this time. In terms of a town by town rainfall accumulation forecast from this rainfall event, Proserpine, Yelbur and Garget expecting between 10 and 30 millimetres. Mackay, I'd say a good number between 75 and 120 millimetres, probably around that 100 millimetre mark, actually. Uh, West Hill and Flaggy Rock probably going to pick up the most amount of rainfall from this weather event here. Carmilla as well, the most amount of rainfall from this weather event. All of those places are expecting at least 150 millimetres and probably substantially more. And some of the homesteads deeper into the mountainous valleys here, they'll be receiving accumulations well in excess of 200 millimetres. St. Lawrence, about 100 millimetres. Same story for Claire. Uh, Clearview as well. Ogmore between 80 and 100 millimetres. Yapoon between about 50 and 80 millimetres. I would say Rockhampton slightly less between 40 and 70 millimetres. And unfortunately Gladstone, yes, they will receive about 20 millimetres of showery stuff, but not expecting anything crazy there. And I would not get your hopes up for rainfall out in Gladstone, unfortunately, because they have had some good rainfall recently. And a couple more drops of rainfall would be fantastic for the follow-up. Extending further inland out towards Emerald and Claremont as well, accumulations could mount up to about 50 millimetres. From storms expected to fire up, some of them could be severe later on tonight, and severe thunderstorms into early Thursday morning as well, early tomorrow morning, I should say. Let's head up the coast now and talk about the far north of Queensland, extending north from Townsville. We do have showers and storms expected to pipe up from later this afternoon, some of which could be severe, and they really do pipe up in dramatic fashion further inland out towards Forsyth, Croydon, Georgetown, and Corumba on the uh, Gulf of Carpentary coastline but it looks like it's going to be a pretty tame afternoon for the far north of Queensland, but I can guarantee you, living up there, you would feel it today. It's going to be very humid, quite warm. Those cicadas are going to be going wild up there as well, so rainfall certainly going to feel like it's imminent. From Thursday morning, those showers will begin to pipe up along these uh, far northern Queensland coastline for locations between Cardwell and Innisfail. We'll be expecting about 20 millimetres by lunchtime, I'd say. Ingham as well, some good showers expected. Townsville expecting storms from about 9 o'clock in the morning. Uh, further inland, out into the Atherton tablelands as well. Hopefully a couple of storms out there delivering some much needed rainfall. They could be severe at times, especially inland towards Georgetown, Forsyth and Mount Surprise. We could be seeing a couple of severe storms there. And then further north up towards Laura and Chilago, we'll be seeing a couple of thunderstorms that could potentially go severe as well. Uh, strong thunderstorms and potential bouts of heavy rainfall late Thursday night for locations between Innisfail and Ingham. We're really going to see a couple of heavy showers driven ashore for those locations. And I would not be surprised if to the 9am on Friday morning we're looking at accumulations between 100 and 150 millimetres um, for some of these locations here, especially around Innisfail and Tully, uh, and then further inland out towards Tongue Oil Alert, some pretty significant accumulations also possible there. Now, the rainfall forecast has been back down from yesterday's. Uh, we, I mean, we were talking about pockets up to about 200 millimetres, but on this forecast, now about 100 to 110 millimetres. Again, this is far north Queensland, so this is just a drop in the ocean, but uh, some of these places do pick up three times the amount forecasted by the forecast models. And just over this three-day period, places around Innisfail, Tully, uh, and like I said, out towards Tongue and uh, Babinda, we could be seeing accumulations amount to about 200 millimetres here, and that's not a bullish forecast. You back me up if you live up in 
far north Queensland as well. The forecast often dramatically underestimates the rainfall that actually does fall. Between other forecast models as well reciprocated there, the Axis G3 actually calling for much more rainfall along the coastline and much more concentrated storms expected along the coastline, which I think is a completely plausible forecast as well, but might be a little bit bullish in terms of some of the rainfall on that front there. Uh, but yeah, between the other forecast models, they've got their mind made up in terms of what's expected for rainfall. It looks like it's going to be a wet one, that's for sure. Uh, certainly stay safe and prepare for some flooding if you live between Mackay and Ogmore, especially around that West Hill area. I'll be giving detailed forecast updates on this every single morning uh, over the next couple of days. Any questions or comments as well, make sure you do leave them in the comment section down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. That basically does it for Queensland's uh, central coast and far north. Now, in terms of that thunderstorm risk, I was actually a little bit wrong in saying severe thunderstorms. We do have severe thunderstorms carrying heavy rainfall across the south central part of Queensland throughout the course of today, and some severe thunderstorms possible around the Charleville area, extending up to about Longreach later on this afternoon. But cloud cover might hamper their growth uh, throughout the course of today. Severe thunderstorms also expected into the central parts of Queensland tomorrow. I mean, as we discussed yes, uh, in the last couple of minutes, rather. Showers also expected to pipe up across southeastern Queensland on Friday, but beyond that, it looks like they're going to head into a dry period. I mean, through Saturday, hardly any rainfall expected across the southeast. Same story for Sunday, same for Monday, same for Tuesday, same for Wednesday. Some showers possible on Thursday into the morning and early afternoon hours and some severe thunderstorms possible into New South Wales. But it looks like Queensland's really heading into a bit of a dry period for at least a week and probably deep into December as well, at least a couple of days into December until they receive their next proper rainfall. So just a heads up for the far north of Queensland. Those thunderstorms, they're not going to be featured in these videos because there's nothing to report about there. So a couple of days of break weather for those locations, which I mean, quite a few people will be very happy to hear. Now let's head into interior Australia and parts of Western Australia as well. We'll keep things focused on the Kimberley region of WA and into the Northern Territory where we do have just a host of thunderstorms expected into next week from Monday the 25th onwards. I mean, we're talking about accumulations at steady above 80 millimetres across interior parts of the Northern Territory. I mean, this is a true monsoon burst here. Sunday night, we're expecting a lot of thunderstorms to pop up into the interior parts of the Northern Territory, impacting Tennant Creek, Elliott Wave Hill, Alice Springs, Ayers Rock, you name it, they will be impacted by thunderstorms they're going to be uh, far uh, not few and far between uh, that's a <laughs> that's a very wrong statement to stay they're going to be everywhere firing up left right and center same deal with monday as well showers and storms expected pretty much everywhere tuesday as well showers and storms will be a little bit weaker on tuesday afternoon wednesday a bunch of showers and storms turning to rain at times across interior parts of the northern territory especially into the afternoon tuesday uh, thursday the 28th of november rather uh, thunderstorms turning to rain in the afternoon across interior parts and then rain turning into thunderstorms across parts of the Northern Territory on Friday as well. And this rainfall not looking like it's stopping anytime soon. It is a very, very wet forecast period for Australia. In fact, over the next 10 days, I mean, just take a look at how much rainfall is expected to pile on across parts of Australia. There's probably about 5% of the Australian land mass, a little pocket in south central parts of Queensland, a little pocket in desert south Australia, and then the far uh, western coast of Western Australia, where no rainfall is expected over the next 10 days. So plenty of stuff to talk about on these forecasts. Let's head into Western Australia now, in particular the Pilbara and then heading south where we have had some gnarly thunderstorms over the past 12 hours and more thunderstorms now on the cards as well. I mean, just take a look at this map here, powered by this low pressure system, this deep low that's heading through uh, parts of the uh, southwest capes of Western Australia and then dragging all of this moisture through here. I mean, just take a look at what's happened over the past uh, 12 hours on the satellite picture, a powerful line of thunderstorms. They're now severe warned for heavy rainfall across uh, parts of the northern and wheat belt now extending into parts of the central wheat belt and these thunderstorms here into the Gascoyne region impacting Mount Magnet, Q and some of the areas around there, especially out towards Payne's Fine. And then thunderstorms also through parts of the interior uh, corners of the gold fields there. And on the infrared satellite picture as well, they are quite strong, quite intense indeed. Perth unlikely to receive any more showers or thunderstorms. There could be a couple of light showers, especially out in the eastern suburbs throughout the course of today. But in terms of heavy showers or thunderstorms, nothing really on the cards. Now, some tremendous rainfall overnight, though, from the showers and thunderstorms. I mean, just take a look at this. If we pull up the archive satellite imagery from yesterday, throughout the course of yesterday, we had some great rainfall accumulations across uh, interior parts of the lower west region of 
of Western Australia. I mean, just take a look at this. Some very strong thunderstorms did blow through there, and rainfall accumulations amounted to in excess of 120 millimetres for some of these places here. Tremendous stuff indeed. Plenty of stuff to talk about in, in a video. And unfortunately, we did miss it on the forecast, and the forecast as a whole has done a really bad job across parts of the lower west with some of these thunderstorms, with places picking up much more rainfall than they should have, uh, and places also missing out on rainfall when they should have picked up more rainfall than other locations, if that makes sense. But yeah, the forecast models uh, have done a pretty crap job at predicting this. I mean, I haven't been focusing on it either, so again, I can't call myself an angel for doing a great forecast on the WA thunderstorms either. But now that I'm back in WA, it is WA focused, uh, and in terms of more showers and thunderstorms throughout the course of today, they're going to be concentrated into interior parts of the state, uh, specifically the gas coin into the northern parts of the wheat belt, specifically for locations north of Great Eastern Highway, and then extending out into the goldfields as well. Showers and storms expected to impact communities around Kalgoorlie, Menzies, Leonora, Laverton, Lanista, and up towards Waluna, and then extending south towards Norseman, Salmon Gums, and Esperance. Thunderstorms possible later on this afternoon and evening. In fact, Esperance does look like a little bit of a wild card for thunderstorms. It doesn't look like it's very likely tonight, but still some severe thunderstorms possible to blow through Kalgoorlie later on this afternoon and evening. And thunderstorms as well making themselves prevalent across parts of the wheat belt, especially into the uh, great southern region of the wheat belt around Mount Barker and the Sterling Range National Park, extending across to about Bremer Bay and Hope Town later on this afternoon and into later on this evening actually we could be seeing some heavy falls around Mount Barker and Katanning as well so for some farmers down there it might be time to get excited for up to about 25 or 30 millimeters later on this afternoon albeit from thunderstorms so it will be hit and miss but yeah from uh, this afternoon we could be seeing some uh, heavy bouts of rainfall down there which would be fantastic to see uh, much needed rainfall as well a couple of showers moving through the Perth metro area early tomorrow morning and some storms around the Ravensthorpe and Salmon Gums area and then further inland out towards the south interior the north interior and then into the parts of the uh, Pilbara region as well. We'll be seeing a couple of thunderstorms extending as far north as about Nulligine and Jill uh, Jigalong uh, throughout the course of tomorrow afternoon. They could be severe at times as well. Thunderstorms persist persisting into Friday morning before they become Northern Territory and South Australia's problem as we talked about a few moments ago. But yeah, in terms of an Australian weather update, that basically does it. It's been very quick for the amount of stuff to talk about as well. So if you have enjoyed it, then please consider leaving a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. The support lately has been much appreciated. Shared it. Thank you so much for watching the video to this point. Special shout out to the channel sponsors. The names are on screen right now. And if I have if I have left anything in answer, then please do let me know in the comment section down below. But I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.